Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Welcome to Norway. Hello everyone. So today we're heading out to Norway to Aquaria Borden to do a workshop over the weekend. We're here at the airport ready to board the plane. We purchased some gifts for friends. They're going to taste some Hungarian deliciousness ready to fly. Just arrived at the Oslo airport, we are waiting for a transfer to the next flight and this airport actually looks stunning. They even have some green walls, like that. Hello again, so now we are actually here in the car with Jason. Hello. We've arrived at our destination, haven't we? This town is called Stavanger, and now we're heading to the shop to check it out. I come to aquascaping in Norway with Tommy from Grinaka. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for Aquaria Borden uh, for having us. I guess most people think I'm going to do an Ivagumi, so I don't want to like disappoint anyone. That's what we're going to do. What's different this time is that yesterday we had some time in the nature around this area and I've actually seen Iwagumi for the first time in real life. Now I have actual real inspiration from nature and we're going to do something like that based on what I've seen yesterday. Here we are in rural Norway and we have some cows back there, some sheep back there and the beautiful nature that Norway offers for us. Actually, it's this is what you get inspired by uh, for aquascaping. Nature like this, seeing the, the rocks, how nature shaped them and so on, it's, it's amazing. Same mods that we use in the terrariums. Power sand is like small pieces, it's almost like a filter media. I'm leaving out all the parts that I know are going to be without plants and mainly with sand. Have the soil already in before any hardscape is that I need some kind of uh, structure for the rocks to sit on. Tommy, is it a good idea to use uh, crushed lava stone to get this uh, air circulation in the soil? Using crushed lava stone is a very good idea for the very same effect. It's very important to build uh, a barrier for the soil so it doesn't just roll out. And I didn't want to make you guys suffer through all that, so that's why I made it uh, in the dojo before. But all the like top parts, we're going to do it here on the spot, so you can enjoy me thinking. That's what you came for. <laughs> this is very handy, having me here, helping me out. These are Frodo stones. This is actually my, uh, my favorite choice for these uh, mountainscape Iwagumis. A debt is proper Iwagumi. The ratios are much closer to, to something what I would build. Lots of green, but even more rocks. And actually the texture looks quite similar to Frodo stones, uh, which I really like to use for my, my builds. Actually, Janne, the co-owner of Aquaria Boden, has brought us here, and this was her backyard in her childhood. This exact place. It must be quite nice to grow up like this. I already know my biggest mistake in this case, without seeing from the front. Correct me if I'm wrong, but all this is very much in the middle, right? Yes. Yes. That's, it would have been nice to hear something else. Than it was. 
What do you want to achieve by moving it like away from the middle? With any artistic composition, you are always talking about uh, golden ratio and the rule of thirds and so on. If some main point is actually in the middle of the tank, that's that's going to bother you, even if you have no artistic genes or whatever. It's just that it's built into us. If I would have this tank at home. I would be fine with this, but I don't want the guys to freak out if this stone moves later on, so it's much easier to just glue it and then there's no worry about it moving. It starts elevating. Whatever you build, doesn't matter if it's an Iwagumi or, or something else, you're always trying to fill the aquarium with hardscape, I mean height-wise. It's a mistake that most uh, new people in the hobby make. If you have about 10 centimeters on top empty, the whole tank looks empty. Uh, you have main stones here. Which one are the main stones? I would go for the highest one and the next highest one. So in this one? Yeah. Not really in this build. It depends. Again, I can show the pictures over there. Those type of wheels, they had main stones. These ones, and this comes back to the whole thing that what I've seen yesterday, this is much more about building the whole layout from smaller pieces. This way I can create much more layers. When we talk about Iwagumi scapes, there is the original nature style Iwagumi, uh, which is more like an underwater scape. And there's the modern one, which is actually I prefer to build. Uh, which is more about mountain scapes in nature. And a lot of people say for these scapes that you can't really plan them because you don't have space besides the rocks to, to feed the plants themselves. Just look at that. Too much stone, no space for a field. Uh, there's no such thing as too much stone. <laughs> there's a bunch of space here and here. Don't worry, you just don't see that from that angle. Um, I need more space. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, if it goes, it's just the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> get a new one more also. Yeah, this won't fit in here, whatever I do. In my aquarium, I, I got a little bit of java moss. Yes. That is spread like crazy. Yeah. Is there any way that you would advise to control it? Rebuild your tank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you think I'm joking. No, it's at that point, there's, there's, it, there's no way you get rid of it. Even if you take out the pieces one by one, there are the small ones that you don't even see. They are almost touching the top. So that's the goal when filling hardscape. The water level is going to be about one centimeter below the top of the tank. Obviously, it's different for everyone, but we usually aim for that. And then there shouldn't be more than one centimeter from the top point, if you can reach that. As you've probably seen a thousand times, <laughs> we need to make the soil wet. I prefer to plant this way. This is Morten, a good friend of ours that's been helping us a lot do all the cleaning and maintenance and fixing our tanks. When you're planting like this, is there a special technique you use to prevent them from floating up when you start filling it with water? It's uh, planting them much deeper than you would normally do. I mean, what, what feels natural when you do it for the first time, plant them deeper. The main point is to have them as deep as you can. You only need the very top of the plant to be sticking out. As long as it sees the light, it's going to come out on its own. Plant one piece, at least one piece, like this, very close to the glass, because this way I can see the roots starting to grow. So I can check just after a few days. If the roots are shooting out, then it's all okay. All these plants need to change leaves once they get underwater because they are nurtured in an immersed form. With yellow acaris types, it goes in a way that all these old leaves, what we have now, they all die off. This is gonna be the main plant. I'm thinking about only one thing. Uh, if I want to use some Ricardia, 
on the rocks. Yesterday, as we were walking around, I really liked it, how you have these lush green hillsides and there's just a bunch of pine trees in the middle of it. You can see these huge rocks, like they were just thrown around throughout the whole landscape and the river gives it a great dynamic. Now this is something that I can get inspiration from for the build and obviously the insanely green grass. Really, we're gonna try to mimic this in the aquarium itself during the workshop. We can also see some high contrast in the greens because besides the grass on the other side of the river, there are all the pines and uh, this is something that we use in aquascaping as well, using different shades of green that you can play around with. It also comes from nature, so this is a great example. And the rocks are quite aggressive. What type of light would you recommend on something like this? And you will probably say you have to use CO2, right? Oh yes, definitely. So yeah, it's highly recommended to use CO2 to get a proper carpet. As for lights, this is 100 by 50 by 50 tank. For a high-tech setup, I would use a Chihiro's WRGB 90 centimeter light. The whole middle thing is uh, it's supposed to represent the fast-going rivers that I've seen. So it's just the rivers with a few stones in it. Across all the mind-blowing landscapes, there's a bunch of fast rivers cutting through them. And uh, we've even seen some wild salmon trying to jump back up uh, to its mating place. So we've been rooting for him. I usually choose the fish by their look. So I'm looking for what complements the scape. Any type of uh, small sized schooling fish. That's what I'm after, to, to have them moving around in one big group. But I wouldn't put anything, uh, any big fish in it. Even like a black neon or whatever, it would destroy the size of the scape. So I'm trying to build a huge mountain and then I put in a big fish and then it's, it's gone. But have you never kept the tank just because of the fish or? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got socialized in aquascaping. And when I got into green aqua and I've seen the aquascapes, I was like, okay, yeah, I don't need an aquarium, I need this. Behind me you can see the North Sea, the UK is somewhere over there as well. It's amazing, it has very distinctive dark colour. Obviously you can see that the rocks are different than what we've seen inland. These have been washed by the water and they're all rounded and so on. You still have a lot of green right on the edge of the sea, which is it's crazy. It's beautiful. The whole of Norway, I need to move here. customer come in and he wants a high setup, expensive one, and you make everything for them and would you then provide like a maintenance plan or stuff like that to tell them what to do if they're like kind of novice but they still want to go all in. We have a very uh, effective uh, support system. We actually have a professional ticketing system where all the inquiries go into the same place. Doesn't matter if it's an email or a Facebook message or whatever goes to the same place, we can set priorities, and by the end of the day, it has to be empty. So we reply to everything within the day. Here comes the tricky part, the sand part in the middle. The sand needs a lot of details. It needs uh, bigger pieces of hardscape uh, here in the middle, definitely, probably here and over here. And then the Riccardia, which I'm so much not sure of, that I might instruct you a few weeks later if I see the plants. All the details that I've just told, it's that way you can get into four or five hours easily. And I don't want you to suffer through all that. So yeah, that's it. 
for the workshop itself. Thank you very much for inviting us. Here we are at the end of our trip. It's been an amazing couple of days here in Norway. Thank you for having us. Thank you for Aquaria Borden for giving us this opportunity. And thank you guys for joining in. Hope you liked the workshop. See you next time. Goodbye.